After studying all these programming languages, operating system, networks, data structures, and algorithms, have you ever wondered what do software engineers do at work after they get their first job? This is what I'm going to be answering in this video. Let's get one thing out of the way. You and I know that you, as a software engineer, you are going to be writing code, right? You're going to be developing software either from scratch or you're going to be writing new features for an existing software. In addition to that, you're also going to be testing your code and maybe fixing issues in your code and so on and so forth. So I don't really need to talk a lot about this because you probably know this already because when you're studying computer science or when you're studying programming, these are the tasks that you do when you're studying. So you kind of expect to do the same kind of tasks when you get your first job. And this is true. This is what you're going to be doing. But what I'm going to focus on in this video is I want to give you an idea of what to expect your responsibilities are going to be, who the people that you're going to be working with, what are their responsibilities and how you interact with them and how you can grow your career as a software engineer. Specifically, there are three main personas that I want to talk about. First, the software engineer, which I'm guessing is you, and I'm gonna talk about you later. But the other two personas that I want to talk about first is the engineering manager and the product manager. You as a software engineer is going to be working very closely with an engineering manager or maybe more than one engineering manager and you're also going to be working with one or more product managers. So before you start your first job, it's kind of important to have a very brief idea of what the responsibilities of each of these personas is because it's gonna make your life so much easier in understanding the dynamics of how working in a tech company looks like. Let's start with the engineering manager. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, your company decided to work on a product. They want to build a product. First of all, this decision comes from upper management, from the company's leadership. These people make strategic decisions about the direction of the company and what products the company should be building. But eventually, this product will be the responsibility of an engineering manager. So an engineering manager in your company is going to be in charge of delivering this product. This means that the engineering manager is going to be communicating with their managers and even upper management to discuss the product, to discuss milestones, deadlines, and what the expectations are for delivering this product. So this will be the responsibility of the engineering manager. Engineering managers also need to hire people who are going to be working on that product. They're usually given a budget, a hiring budget, and they use this budget to hire whoever they need to hire to deliver the product. So there's a lot of planning and strategic thinking that an engineering manager will need to do in order to optimize the utilization of pretty much the limited funding that they have. Once engineering managers have a team of people working on the product that are reporting to them, they're also responsible for this team. They're responsible for the happiness of the team, unblocking each member of the team whenever anything happens to them. Managers are also in charge of your career growth. So your promotions, what your career goals are, all of these things are also the responsibility of the engineering manager. And as you can see, the skill set that is required from an engineering manager is a little different from the skill set that you'd expect from a software engineer. Because at the end of the day, an engineering manager is a people's person. They want to make sure the people who are working on the product are happy. They want to make sure that leadership is happy, all while making sure that the product gets delivered on time. So that's for the engineering manager. Now let's talk about the product manager. Product managers, unlike engineering managers, they are not people's managers. Product managers manage the product, not the people. What does that mean? Well, this means that, for example, what are the requirements of the product? What are the things that we need to build in the product? If there is some features that we want to build, how important this feature is to our customers who are going to be using our product. So the skill set that a product manager has is also different from the skill set that a software engineer has. Product managers tend to be more business savvy people. They understand the business. They understand the market. They understand competition very well. 
they engage directly with customers to gather these requirements and understand what customers actually need and deliver all of these insights and all of this information to management and to software engineers who are going to end up building this product. Product managers always write something called PRDs, Product Requirements Document. And this is a document that basically details all the requirements that is needed of a certain product. Now, finally, let's talk about the software engineer. When you start out your software engineering career, you will start out as a junior software engineer. You will be the one who's actually building the product. This involves writing code, testing your code, making sure that the product is functional and it is consistent with the PRD that came from the product manager. But you're not going to be working alone. You're going to be working with other software engineers. Some of them are junior software engineers like you and others will be more senior software engineers who are not only going to be more experienced than you are, but they will also sometimes act as your mentors. In addition to that, you're also going to be working very closely with your direct manager to discuss the product, to discuss uh, if anything is blocking you from delivering what you have to deliver, and more importantly, to discuss your career goals and your career growth. And of course, you're also going to be engaging with the product manager to maybe discuss the product requirements or to discuss the feasibility of some features, you know, things from that nature. As a junior software engineer, tasks will be assigned to you. Think of this as like doing homework in a, in a college setting. You have a task, you have to deliver something, and you just have to build it, make sure it works correctly, and you deliver it. But if you want to move from being a junior software engineer and climb the the ladder to maybe like more senior levels and leadership levels, I want you to think of your software engineering career as a spectrum, where on one end you have implementation and execution. This is when you're just writing code, building the product itself. And then on the other end, you have technical leadership and strategy. When you are starting out, you're expected to work on the end of execution and implementation. And if you want to grow as a software engineer, you have to slowly move towards the leadership slash strategy. Technical leadership means that you're technically very strong, but that's not enough. It also means that you have very good leadership skills. You take initiatives, you assume responsibility, you deliver on time, you can also delegate work. The more you develop your technical skills, in addition to leadership skills and strategy, this is when you can grow as a software engineer. Technical skills alone can take you up to a certain level but then after this level it's going to be very very hard to grow if you don't work on these other skills that you need to build in order to grow farther. I have found out that if you want to be a good leader at work it really starts by being a good leader of your own life. So if you want to learn how to be a leader, if you want to develop your le leadership skills, you can start by just leading your own life. Do you have goals in your own life that you want to achieve? How do you think about achieving them? Do you take initiative in your day-to-day -day life? Do you assume responsibility and do you deliver on what you promise? If you have these skills in your life, it's going to be much easier to transfer these skills to the workplace. So you don't really need to wait to start developing your leadership skills, you can just start working on your leadership skills right now. If you have any questions about software engineering career or if you want to see more videos like this, leave your questions down below and I'll make sure to answer them. See you in the next video.